The weather earlier this week reminded us of one of the reasons why New Englanders are often referred to as God's frozen people. Of course, the many puritanical churches that dot our landscape also contribute to our reputation. But that does not mean we don't have feeling or depth of spirit or passion. But have you noticed that many people in our New England churches only let go and praise God in full zest and vigor when we sing? When the organist plays the first chord of a favorite hymn or anthem, our hearts often soar. When all the stops come out at the final verse of hymns like, How Great Thou Art, or Great Is Thy Faithfulness, our spirits are lifted up in ways ineffably sublime. And what praises the Almighty in the assembly of his people are not so much the quality of our vocal cords or of our sense of pitch, but our spirit and our motivation represented in the Hebrew word, Alleluia, praise the Lord. The beauty of music in our worship is found not so much in its well-performed harmonies as in our service offered to the Lord through the expression of our voices. And for 25 years, Vima Lejeune was central to that sense of worshipful service. The people of God have been offering up hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, not only for generations of our history, not only for centuries, but for millennia. It is not an accident that music and hymn singing are part of our divine service and our worship experience. Even before the time that music moved King David 3,000 years ago to dance before the ark, Scripture has repeated references to God's people singing God's praise and God's people being exhorted to proclaim God's wonders through song. The Israelites, having just walked over dry land through the Red Sea, took time in their continuing pilgrimage to sing to God. Vima was part of a long tradition of musical worship. As it says in the book of Exodus, then Miriam took a timbrel in her hand. All the women went out after her with timbrels and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Paul's letter to the Colossians admonishes us to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. It was that counsel that led Martin Luther to translate the Psalms of David into the common language of his day and his country, so that every farmer walking behind his plow would sing to himself in the language of inspiration and revelation. God is that much closer to us when we use the words of heaven and the tunes of the angels to fill our ears and our hearts and our minds and our lips with the glories of heavenly song and praise. Vima brought us the tunes of the angels. And thus we find ourselves here today in remembrance of someone who is central to our music ministry for a quarter century. Colebrook Congregational Church has been blessed not only with a new upright Steinway Grand Piano dedicated to Vima's memory just a moment ago. We have been blessed not only with a fine organ donated by one of Vima's music teachers, John Ferris. We also boast an exceptionally talented organist who worked with Vima, an experienced choir director who is Vima's long-standing musical colleague, and a choir that is unmatched in other churches many times our size. It has been said many, many times, first by St. Augustine himself, that the one who sings prays twice. If that is true, 
What a life of prayer this congregation enjoys. How many times did Vima, in effect, lead us in prayer through her many talents? Surely music is a vehicle that can take us into God's presence. Surely music reaches our emotions and touches our souls as we savor the peace and calm that come to us in words such as, what a friend we have in Jesus. Music provides our souls with spiritual food and nourishment, and Vima fed us well. Every occasion for worship is an opportunity to feed God's people with spiritual food. I'm keenly aware that very often the music of an anthem or a hymn or an introit, even a simple amen from the organ, may be more profound and sufficient to one's spiritual health than any word I might utter from the pulpit. So then, what would worship be without our musicians? The Israelites thought their musicians so important that they recorded their names in the scriptures in the Psalms, and most notably in the Book of Chronicles. When the chronicles of God's people gathered in prayer in Colebrook are recorded, Vima's name will surely be among them, front and center, alongside the names of the seven Colebrook pastors with whom she served. What would our worship have been like for those 25 years from 1989 to 2014 had Vima not been gracing the organ consul. Without Vima and her genius and her joy and her dedication and her love for us all, the silence on Sunday mornings would have been deafening. For all good gifts, may we give thanks today, especially for the unspeakable gifts that Vima brought to us, comforting us, uplifting us, inspiring us in and by her love for God. Amen. <laughs>